My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today's video is on the subject of mental health and heart disease. And in particular, I wanted to focus on depression and heart disease. So the first thing to say is that despite all the technological advances in medicine, uh, the way we practice medicine is still um, lacking, is still not ideal. And part of the reason is that we don't really see the patient as a whole person. We tend to be so obsessed with numbers, physical parameters, uh, adhering to evidence and um, sticking to protocol that we uh, tend to put those things first instead of the patient. And what we need to understand is that the patient um, is a unique human being, the, the patient is a unique person. Uh, he has, um, of course, a body, but he has a mind and he has a spirit. And we really need to practice our medicine to cater for uh, his physical health, his mental health and his spiritual health. And if we don't do that, then we miss um, great opportunities uh, to improve the patient, make the patient healthier, uh, but also uh, liberate the patient rather than enslave the patient, which is what we do these days. Um, uh, by the way that we practice medicine if you think about it the minute a person has a heart attack we say you can't do this you can't do that you can't do this etc and the patient can often uh, feel very scared uh, very entrapped really and a good doctor needs to um, see that patient as a unique human being and should offer those that patient those things that um, science doesn't teach us uh, which are basic humanity, which are empathy, engagement, education, empowerment. Today I wanted to talk about depression and heart disease. Uh, the first thing I would say is that mental health and physical health are very closely aligned. I would venture as far as saying that you cannot be physically healthy if you're mentally or spiritually unhealthy. Um, the second thing to say is that uh, as, as mentioned earlier, while we focus on the phys physical um, health of a patient, uh, a focus on mental health remains largely neglected and is very much needed. Let's talk about depression. The first thing to say is that one in five patients who have cardiovascular disease or heart failure are depressed. When you compare this prevalence to the normal population, to the general population, the prevalence of depression is three times greater in patients who have cardiovascular disease. We also know that the presence of depression uh, makes a person's quality of life worse. So if you take two groups of people who have similar heart parameters, who have similar physical parameters, but one group is depressed compared to the other group, the depressed group will report greater physical limitation and worse quality of life compared to the group of patients who have exactly the same kind of heart, you know, objective markers of cardiac status, uh, but who are not depressed. So the presence of depression makes quality of life worse for the patient. Number two, the presence of depression has been shown to adversely affect prognosis as well. So what happens to the patient? If you're depressed, you are twice as more likely to have another heart event. So if you've had a heart attack, you are twice as more likely to have another heart attack if you have depression compared to if you don't. This is the kind of risk that is conferred by having diabetes, for example. So depression really is a major risk factor in terms of um, what happens to the patient after a heart attack. Unfortunately, whilst we concentrate lots on giving people statins and blood pressure lowering medication, no one really pays much attention to that person's mental health. And perhaps we should be doing that. Um, a lot of research focuses on patients who've had a heart attack. So, you know, the patients who've largely been studied are patients who've already had something happen to their heart and then you look for depression and they find of course that there's a lot more depression in those people but there is some research to suggest that if you've never had a heart attack and you have depression you are at a higher risk of bad things happening to you this takes us back to my original point which was you cannot be physically healthy if you're mentally and spiritually unhealthy so just the mere presence of unaddressed depression could increase the risk of bad things happening to the patient. And that's worth bearing in mind. Uh, 
the next question is, well, what is the mechanism? Why do people with depression have worse outcomes? What is the, what is the correlation there? The first thing I guess is that uh, patients who have depression are less likely to adhere to those things that may make us healthier. So people who are depressed are less likely to want to exercise. They're less likely to want to give up um, smoking. They're less likely to lose weight. They're less likely to comply with medications. They're more likely to become socially isolated. They're more uh, likely to become lonely. And those are horrible, horrible things, you know, social isolation, loneliness, etc. So that's the first thing. The second thing is dep um, there is a link with inflammation. As you know, most heart disease happens because of inflammation. And there are two theories surrounding depression and inflammation. The first is that inflammation can cause depression. So a person who is inflamed uh, is more likely to become depressed and because they're more likely to, they're more inflamed, they're more likely to develop heart disease. And the second risk is that depression in itself is an inflammatory um, process. So it can actually induce inflammation within the body, which can then increase the risk of bad things happening to the patient. There is also some evidence that depression is associated with autonomic imbalance in the patient. And there are some really interesting studies suggesting that depression can actually reduce the amount of coronary flow reserve, amount of blood flowing into the heart arteries, and therefore over a period of time make the heart muscles uh, more likely to suffocate. This is just experimental research, but it's interesting. It points to possible mechanisms. Uh, Another really interesting study is in patients with high, uh, blood pressure. When we look at patients, healthy patients, and you look at their blood pressure, their average blood pressure will fall at night when they're asleep. So this is called nocturnal dipping. So in healthy people, the blood pressure falls at night. Uh, in patients who are depressed, you see this, um, you don't see their blood pressure fall as much at night. And uh, the very fact that their blood pressure doesn't fall is associated with having complications associated with long-standing high blood pressure, vascular disease, which can then again lead to heart attacks, etc. So those are the uh, possible mechanisms. The next question then is to try and say, well, okay, you know, we should only worry about things that we can do something about. So what can we do about it if we identify depression? Well, the first thing I think it's it's really important to look after your mental well-being at all times. You shouldn't wait until you develop a heart disease. Uh, from a very early stage, people should always say, look, you know, am I mentally nourished? Am I mentally healthy? Am I happy? Uh, we should not put that to the side and we should talk about it and we should seek help whenever we need to. Uh, at an early stage. So the best thing is never to get to that stage where you develop heart disease by tackling those things early on. But uh, in those people in whom uh, you've already had a cardiac event and you identify depression, what can you do about it? And the answer is, well, you want to do things to A, improve quality of life and B, improve prognosis. And we really don't have very good confirmatory evidence, um, firstly, about which uh, Therapy works best. So as you know, in depression, you can use antidepressants, you can use behavioral techniques, you can use things like, you know, uh, psychological uh, techniques, etc. We don't know which of those techniques or whether it's a combination, which is best in terms of improving prognosis. And there's really very little research around tackling depression and therefore uh, definitively preventing bad things from happening. But what we do know is that if you tackle depression, then you get the same kind of results in a patient, in a population with heart disease. If you tackle their depression, you get similar results to if they didn't have heart disease, meaning you improve a person's quality of life um, by tackling the depression. Uh, there was a very interesting study, I think it was called the Mosaic Study, and it was published in JAMA in June 2014. And the lead author was a guy called Huffman. And what these guys were interested in is they looked at a bunch of people who were released from hospital after having a cardiac event, and they were interested in identifying depression. And then what they did was they delivered a... Uh, an intervention based around a personalized intervention for their depression. Uh, and this was based around uh, antidepressant medications where they used 
mainly sertraline or citalopram, uh, but also a combination of medications and psychological techniques, CBT, other psychological techniques. Uh, and they followed these people up uh, over 24 weeks. And what they found is that when they tackled the depression, patients reported better overall quality of life, better mental health um, related quality of life, and better general functioning. So again, small study, preliminary data, but certainly such a highlights the importance of A, of picking up depression, and B, trying to tackle it, if for no other reason than improving the person's quality of life, making that life uh, worth living, um, you know, and when when people have a heart attack, you know, often they worry about the fact that they may have another heart attack. But it is really, really important for those people to recognize that the only thing that we have is our quality of life, our today. And we shouldn't really compromise on today. And um, if you have depression, then addressing that may make for a better today. Um, so what I'm not saying is that, oh, plonk everyone on antidepressants. I'm not suggesting that at all. What I'm saying is depression is important. We should be aware of it. And only by being aware of it will we highlight its importance and uh, hopefully um, incentivize people to do research around it so that we can find out exactly what impact depression has on our long-term outcomes. So once again, thank you so much for everything you do for me. I'm wearing a rather colourful shirt today, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's nice sometimes to brighten your day up. Great. So thank you once again. And um, once again, thank you for everything you do for me. Um, I would definitely uh, be not as happy if I didn't have all of you supporting me and sending me uh, the lovely comments you do. Thank you so much. All the best.